ever since I read um, Michael Denton's book and concluded that Darwin's theory was a lot less powerful than people thought, I was kind of anxious to make my case known, to tell people about it. So I would stop members in the halls at Lehigh University and graduate students and tell them about it and they'd listen politely and nod and then they'd go away and <laughs> I thought this was not the way to, to get, the, uh, get the message out. Uh, but then I saw an advertisement for another book. Uh, this one was called Darwin on Trial by a man named Philip Johnson. And uh, I read it from start to finish in a couple days, really uh, loved it. And then a couple weeks later, after reading it, I came across an issue of the journal Science, which is one of the premier journals in biology. And it had a little news item on Philip Johnson's book. And it was a warning to faculty to keep your students away from this book because it might confuse them. So after I read this dismissive article on Johnson's book, uh, again I got mad. I'm, I'm kind of Irish on my mom's side and so I have a little bit of a temper. So I wrote a letter to the editor of Science Magazine saying this Johnson fellow seems to be pretty smart and he raises legitimate questions so why don't we just address the questions instead of uh, using ad, ad hominem arguments and dismissing them. Uh, I didn't know it then, but Phil was a real schmoozer, and he had a network of people interested in the same question of Darwin's theory. At that point, unknown to me, I was kind of plugged into that network. I first met Mike in 1992 at a uh, conference in Dallas. We had known of each other through Philip Johnson, and we both showed up in a uh, a, sm a small private conference at SMU that was pitting uh, critics of Darwinian evolution and uh, uh, against people who were defending it. And I looked down the, the table and uh, we hadn't been introduced in person yet, but we knew, who, uh, we knew each other by reputation and we smiled and nodded. He did a fantastic talk that later was, uh, it was about the origin of proteins. He showed that it was very difficult to uh, for proteins to originate by an undirected, unguided mutational process. Um, a couple year, a year later, we met in person at uh, Pajaro Dunes in California, and there he first sketched out some of the ideas that would become Darwin's black box, his idea of irreducible complexity. I first met Mike Behe in the early 90s, and uh, uh, at a memorable conference in Pajaro Dunes on the, uh, at the coast of California, he was beginning to toy with the idea of writing a book about a notion that he dubbed irreducible complexity. Uh, and I, I can remember as he was beginning to sketch this idea out, thinking this, this idea has legs. This idea is significant. And then I had the privilege of reading the manuscript. So every few weeks in 1994-95, in uh, envelopes would show up in my mailbox with chapter drafts. And I can see where I was sitting in my office at the time in Illinois, uh, turning the pages and laughing out loud. Uh, Mike has a real way with metaphors and images. And he would describe, for instance, uh, molecules on, on opposite sides of a membrane, like te teenagers on opposite sides of a door at a party, you know, and uh, compare evolution, the evolutionary process to a squirrel trying to get across a highway and so forth. Vivid writing, but really, it wasn't just the vivid writing, it was the compelling logic underneath that writing. And uh, so I think Mike's book had a, a tremendous impact, and, and people are still grappling with the origin of these complex, irreducibly complex systems. He claimed in 1996 that there were no detailed step-by-step -step Darwinian explanations for the origins of things like the bacterial flagellar motor or the ATP synthase or uh, many of this, the, the t different types of circuitry we find in cells. And it is still the case that there are no detailed Darwinian step-by-step uh, -step gradualistic explanations of those features and we're 20 years on. So uh, whereas there have been little things like uh, people playing with mouse, mouse traps online, uh, serious scientific refutations of Behe's work are still very much forthcoming.
Would I ride Darwin's Black Box again uh, in a heartbeat? Uh, it's, it's terrific. Uh, this is the kind of problem that I really like. Something that's very easy to see, uh, uh, something that's utterly obvious, but nobody else has taken the trouble to, to, to notice. Uh, something that is resisted and fought against, but for all the wrong reasons. Uh, that because you're not supposed to think that way or because, you know, sometime in the future we'll figure it out. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very pleased that I had the opportunity to, to write this. Uh, it, it was an obvious uh, book. Uh, I'm surprised nobody wrote it before. It points out a very important problem for biology that should not be ignored. The replies I've gotten, the answers that have uh, come in over the past 20 years have been uh, utterly unpersuasive and, and uh, to me, and the problem has only gotten, uh, gotten worse. Uh, so I feel uh, fortunate. The, you know, there, there certainly have been some uh, times when you feel the heat because people get emotional about these topics. Uh, but, um, but it's uh, overall been a lot of fun because you can uh, raise questions that are important um, and, uh, and um, try, to, try to affect the way biology sees an, an important uh, issue.